Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and this is a project that I've long since uh, kind of shelved. I was originally going to build this into a toaster and make a Nin toaster, but I don't know, I may still do that. I may get another one of these Retro Duo NES boards and try to do that in the future, but I want to make things that not just look cool but are useful for me personally. And so the problem with the Nin toaster is it would just sit on my shelf or on my underneath my TV and collect dust most of the time. It'd be large, mostly empty, unwieldy, not all too useful. I kind of want something I can, you know, throw in my backpack. And um, I have a lot of portable projectors that connect to composite video um, that this outputs. So I'd like to be able to take it with me, pull out a projector and start gaming pretty much anywhere. And I want to add wireless controllers and kind of do the whole shebang and do it high tech. Do it as if Nintendo released a retro modern new NES, basically. Uh, besides the NES Classic, they actually played real carts. So, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, do a little bit of modification and uh, design a custom case for this guy. Uh, so, let me show you guys exactly what I have in mind. I kind of sketched it up here on this board. And you can see here it is going to be tiny. It's about, it's going to be actually a little bit smaller than a cart itself. And the cart will lie flat on the front. So when you look at it head on, it'll basically just look like a cart uh, with some buttons and LEDs on the bottom. So you can stand this vertically upright so that the cart faces you and you can see the label. Or you can set it flat face down on the uh, table. Uh, you won't be able to see any of the indicators, unfortunately, in that orientation, but it'll take up a lot less room. Uh, so my idea is this will be kind of a tiny little L-shaped device, sort of, and you can just throw it in the backpack. It'll have a power switch on the front, a power indicator for that, obviously, and then four LEDs, uh, because this guy is actually going to have one of these uh, battery packs inside. So it's going to be rechargeable, require no extra power. All you have to plug in is a single 3.5 millimeter um, AV jack. So this will be like the same type of jack that the iPods used to use. Um, it's just like a headphone jack, but it has four conductors. And this will output the AV. Uh, so essentially you don't need, have you know, large cumbersome uh, RCA jacks. You just have a single jack that goes in and, you know, Bob's your uncle. Uh, player one and two ports. I was tempted to put them on the front, but that would look kind of hideous, honestly. So I decided to hide them behind the uh, cart uh, because the cart will actually stick up above the device a little bit. So you'll have your player one and two ports, um, you know, coming out the top, essentially. And also when you lay it down, then you won't be able to see, you know, the ports or anything like that. There is a single USB port. And I actually forgot to add a single USB port on the side and a um, charging indicator for, for that, obviously. And these four LEDs on the front will be the battery meter. So whenever it's on, it'll show you, uh, you know, roughly the percentage of battery left remaining from in, in increments of 25%, basically. So um, from what I read, the Retro Duo itself, the NES side, you know, only consumes about, I think, 80 something milliamps. Uh, so that, uh, in addition to these LEDs, I think it's going to be about 100 milliamps. So if I stick a, a 1,000 milliamp hour battery in here, which isn't actually that large anyway, uh, battery life should be about 10 hours-ish. Uh, if I stick a standard uh, uh, 8650 or whatever these cells are, um, if I stick one of these guys in... Um, the battery left should be probably about like 25 hours, at least 20 hours. So that would be really good battery life. Not that I game a lot of NES, but this is sort of kind of a neat thing that I thought uh, would be pretty cool to have. So anyway, let me take you to the computer and actually have the uh, CAD drawings for the 3D models already uh, designed and ready to print. So let me take you into that now. Okay, so here you can see the um, the CAD model that I've uh, designed. Basically, there's this front part here, which houses the LEDs and buttons. There's a middle part, which houses most of the electronics, and then the back, finally, which is, well, just a back. Uh, everything uses screws to attach, as well as screw holes and posts that are built into the model. And here you can see, um, just uh, swiveling around, you can get a little bit of a better idea of the inside of the front. Uh, which will house a right angle uh, connector for the cart. And the middle here 
you can see the uh, the USB on the side they're poking through as well as a hole for the wires uh, just collapsing everything back together and this is roughly the compact size uh, that it will be so yeah um, now I just gotta go through and print all this uh, <laughs> Uh, I need to actually get some filament in these colors or some spray paint or something and figure that out. But yeah, this already looks uh, pretty cool, pretty neat. Uh, it'll be fairly compact, about the size of a cart. Yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the look at um, the kind of design process I've taken uh, for designing this. This is already pretty much all wired up. I have to wire the reset line, and uh, that's going to be controllable via the microcontroller. So that button on the front, it's just a single button that will control both power and reset. Uh, to turn it on, you press and hold, and it will turn on after probably about three to five seconds of pressing and holding so it doesn't accidentally turn on. And once it's on, if you just do a single short click, it will reset the system. And if you press and hold it, it'll um well from one, once you actually press it it'll hold it and reset and then if you have it continually held for like another three to five seconds then it'll turn the system off so i want to do it this way and i'll need a microprocessor to do all this but i want to do it this way so that um i can actually play like zelda and games with a uh, battery backup so that you know it doesn't mess up the save uh because if you just power off the system without holding reset um, you can actually corrupt the game save. So I've, I've already kind of got an idea of what I want to do. I'm probably going to use the uh, uh, 12F675 for uh, both reading the button, controlling power to the NES, controlling reset, whatnot, and uh, hopefully I can get those uh, battery, in uh, you know, the battery meter indicator LEDs working as well. I think I might just barely have enough IO to do all that, but I'll figure it out. Anyway, uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this random video, and um, I'll update you guys once I get this printed out and start. I'll have to actually trim some of this board uh, because it is noticeably wider than the cart itself, uh, and the entire case design is based off of the width of the cart, basically. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next video, and I will update you then. If you have any questions or ideas, put them down below, and because this is still kind of in the design phase, I can definitely uh, modify you know, the files and whatnot still. So anyway, thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.